We have this is the Zabam, and we have base base. We examine a Zabam even seven ways before uh, is before he's confirmed Tamay as a Zab for food, for drink, for carrying a load, for jumping, for illness, for sight, and for thought, regardless of whether he thought before he saw or he or he saw before he thought. Rabbi Yehuda says, even if he saw a pair of dismayed animals, wild animals or fowl engaged in relations with each other, and even if he saw a woman's colorful garments. Rabbi Akiva says, even if he ate any food, whether bad or good, or drank any drink, they said to Rabbi Akiva, if so, there will never be a Zavim from now on. And Rabbi Akiva said to them, you are not responsible for Zav. Once he is, oh, um, I'm sorry, once he is confirmed as a Zav, we do not examine him. A confirmed Zav's mishap and his doubt and his semen are tame because the matter has legs to stand on. After he had one mission, we examine him. After the second mission, we examine him. But after the third admission, we do not examine him. And Rebbe Eliezer says, even after the third admission, we examine him on account of the offering. Gimel, someone who has a seminal mission does not become Tameh through a Zava mission for the following 24 hours. Rabbi Yossi says, only that day. Regarding a non-Jew who has a seminal mission and then converted, he can immediately become Tameh through a Zav a mission. Regarding a woman who has a discharge of blood and a woman who has a difficult labor, a 24-hour period, and regarding the day or uh, regarding the, the day or two days for someone who strikes a slave, it is a 24-hour period. Regarding a dog who ate which ate flesh of a corpse for 23 hour periods, three for three 24 hour periods, the flesh is in its natural state. And a Zav contaminates a couch of one uh, in one of five ways, rendering the couch able to contaminate a man to accommodate his clothing, but the Zav standing on it, sitting on it, lying on it, hanging on it, or leaning on it. The contaminated couch of a Zav contaminates a man in one of seven ways to the degree that the man will further contaminate his clothing by the man standing on it, sitting on it, lying on it, hanging on it, leaning on it, and through contact and through carrying. Okay. Okay. Uh, Perik Gimbal. All right. So now this Perik deals with the uh, transmission of Tumma from, from a Zav to a Tower person. Um through uh, through the through the placing of weight. So we just learned in the in the last Mishnayas how the, your general rule for a zav transmitting tumah is if he if his weight is supported by the thing that he's transmitting to. Okay, whether it's a couch or whether it's a person. And there's some other interesting. So other than like the obvious cases of a tahu person putting it a, a, a zav on his back or on his shoulders, that would certainly turn him in into oh. a, into a midras. Um, but uh, there are some other situations which the Mishnah is going to is going to spell out over here, where you might not have realized that this is a situation where the Tamo person is actually supporting the weight of the Tame person, and therefore will also become Tame, not only him but also his clothes. Right. Okay. And all and his clothes will also become a midras tumah. They will they will receive midras level tumah, which means that they themselves will transmit tumah in in seven ways. Okay. So they're sitting in a boat, okay, or ba'asda, or in a raft, or al gabi behema, or they're both riding together on a horse, okay. big um, nogim, even though their clothes don't even touch, elu midras, they will both the the taho person and his clothing will become tame with a midras. Why? In all of these cases, um, because the the object that they're both sitting on is unstable. Um, and it will shift its weight based on their own weight. It, it is probable that at some point in time, the um, the person who is uh, who is tahor will be will be causing will be will be causing the other person to be supported. Okay, mm -hmm. so like for example, on a boat, if he if he just steps on the right, one side and the boat lifts a little bit and, and lifts the and lifts the 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 zav straight away, the uh, the tahor person is going to become midras. Okay, Yashvu ala neser. They they sat on a plank, a gang plank. That's so. Uh, um, or ala safsal, or on a bench. Ala gashish shalamita, or on the board of a bed. Ala achlona ach uh, achlonas is. Uh, wait, how do you translate that one? Is uh, a support beam, support beam of a bed, or on a pole that is unsteady. Right. If they are unsteady, right? If they're if they're solid, they're, uh, actually we're going to see that in a in the coming Mishnah today. If they if they are unsteady, or they both climbed a, a tree that's uh, that's not strong. In other words, it, it, when you climb it, it shakes from side to side. 
אוקיי? Okay? וסוכה, וסוכה, שכוח הרע, ואילן יפה, או even on a, um, on a branch of a tree that is unstable, even if it's on a stable tree. So you could have the one amazing big oak tree, which is solid on the branch, but if they both sat on the same branch and the branch was, uh, was moving, okay, that's also going to cause a transmission. בסולם מצרי, an Egyptian ladder, בזמן שאין קבוע במסמר. If it, uh, the Egyptian ladder is a small ladder, which is uh, sometimes fixed by a nail. If it's fixed by a nail, then it's uh, then it's stable. But if it's not, then it wobbles. Ala kevesh, or on a on a ramp. Ala kora, on a beam. Ala delis, on a or on a door. Bizman she'ena masuim betit. If they haven't been fixed in place with plaster, it's mayim. In all these cases, tuma is transmitted. Rabbi Yehuda, as a das yachid over here, says, no, these are tahor, because he's not worried about heset. Right. Now, Heset is the, so let's just look at Heset over here. We said that the, the, the Tumah is transmitted by the Tama person supporting the weight of the Tame person. Now, in, in many of these cases, it's, it, it's not clear that there's definitely going to be um, a movement caused. Like if they're both sitting on a plank or something like that, it's difficult to say that, um, that he's... Um, is that it, basically what's happening is the the ta the Tame person may be may be moving the Taha person um and if 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 the Tame person moves the Taha person that does not tr transmit the tumor. it's only if the ta Taha person moves the Tame per person or supports his weight in some way okay now the headset set is is kind of a it's kind of like a doubtful tumor um and we pass in that it's, uh, it's uh, so what we're learning in this mission is that in all these cases where there is a possible movement. We we pass in Tame because at some point it, it maybe the Tama person was actually supporting the weight of the Tame person. It's not a clear cut case though. And that's why mm -hmm. Rabbi says, I'm not worried about it. There wasn't a, there wasn't a clear movement, and therefore he and therefore he paskins the heter, but in, in uh, but the halacha does not follow him. Okay. Mishnah base carries on um, our, our examples. Megifin or Poschin. Now, what happens if they are um, closing or opening a door together? Okay, so the, the, it starts out with the, with uh, an anonymous Tana who is who states that if they if they together close a door or open a door, then the the term is also transmitted. <laughs> Only if they're opposing each other. So if the one is pushing the door and one uh, from the one side and the other is pushing the door from the other side. Then the tumor is transmitted because, in that case, the tahor will be supporting the weight of the tame. But if they're working together, there's no transmission. Right? They're, they're not they're not affecting each other's uh, balance. Malian ze is ze min habor. What happens if uh, one lifts the other from uh, from the bore? Okay. In that case, we say that they're both uh, that, that that the tumor is transmitted. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Aji Tahor Male Satame. Only, says Rabbi Yehuda, so consistent with the previous Mishnah, he says there's only one case where there's clearly going to be transmission. Okay, and that is if the if the uh, Tahor person is lifting the Tame person. But if the other way around, it's the then the Tame person is bearing the weight of the Tahor person. He'll get he'll become Tame just by touching, but that's that's that that works in degrees. So then the person oh. that is touching will become a Rishon, not a, not a Midras. Okay, so if he's say before i'm just looking at this again if the zav and the tahor person close the door together at the same time yes okay so um, the kama says that they that they will that they that the term is transmitted but the chachamim um who the halach will follow is only if they oppose each other okay all right okay so now but the chachamim are still choshesh for, for hesed so let's say the Tame person, so as opposed to Rabbi Yehuda, who says it's only if, if the Tahor lifts the Tame. But if it's the other way, if the Tame is lifting the Tahor, Chachamim are, are worried that um, that with that movement, perhaps the you know while he's pulling up, the Tahor person will will be pulling down, and he just has to like make the Tame person move down a little bit by pulling him, and straight away right. he's become Tame. So we so we choshesh for that. Mafshirin b'chavalin. If what happens if he if they are um, both working on on ropes, if they're, so if they're both busy um, twisting a rope in manufacture, so there it says the Tanakama, it will be the the the, the tumor will, will be transmitted because they're both working on the same piece of rope and probably somebody will pull somebody else, 
וחכמים אומרים עד שיהיה זה מושך הלך וזה מושך הלך, only if they're working on opposite ends. In other words, if the one's pulling this one and the other's pulling that one, so if, he's, if he so much as moves the other guy's hand by pulling it, okay, he's tamay. Or again, if they are weaving together, ben omdin ben yoshvin, whether they are sitting or standing, or tochnim, or grinding. Um, so, um, so again, they are, um, they, they, they are likely to move each other if they are jointly involved in any of these activities. Rabbi Shimon Matar Bechulan, Rabbi Shimon says, forget about all of the, these cases over here. Uh, unless they're both working on a hand mill, because the hand mill is uh, is so small. Um, uh, even 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 Rabbi Shimon says because um, um, even Rabbi Shimon will agree because I, I think it doesn't it doesn't spell it out over here, but I think because they're competing for a for a small piece of uh, of, of equipment. And inevitably, somebody's going to pull it a little bit and, and take somebody else's hand with it. Mm -hmm. okay. And the halach does not follow Shir Rabbi Shimon anyway. Porkin min hachamor. What happens if they are unloading from a donkey or toanim or loading a donkey together? Bizman masam kabed. If the load is heavy, then it'll be then there will be tame. Why? Because the because the load is going to move and shift and 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 let, and the taho person. Um, is going is going to take a bit, uh, is going to take the weight of the tame person at some point tame. There's manchim asam kal tahorim. If but if they're just offloading light light produce, it's not going to shift anyone's weight. Bechulan tahorin libnei hakneses utmein lechuma. Okay, now libnei hakneses. This is what this is referring to. Kati explains is that it's talking about people who eat chulin in tara. So if you have a if you have a chumrah, uh, which is was a common thing for in, during the times when people were eating truma, um, th then you would, people would have a chumrah to also eat the chulin in, in tara just to be careful. Um, but in but in these cases where where we have uh, the hesed truma, we said that, um, even even people who have this chumrah can carry on eating their chulin in tara uh, uh, with this with this truma because it's not uh, it, because it's not a strong it's not a strong tumor. It's it's really a, it's just a suspicion, and um and it's a kind of a tumor de rabbanon. With tumay and the tumor, however, they may not eat their tumor because that because even though it is a tu, uh, a tumor de rabbanon, the tumor is a is a deraisa, and and therefore we, we can't we, we can't overlook this chumra. Okay, and Mishnah uh, Gimel. This is now uh, all the counter examples of what we saw in Mishnah Aleph. Okay, in the case of this, and these are the cases where there is no transmission of tumma. The Zavan and the Tahor Shiyashvu Basfina Gedola, they're sitting in a big boat. Okay, they're sitting on a cruise ship. Nobody is moving anybody on this on this ship, and therefore there's no transmission of tumma. Ezohi Sfina Gedola, how big is it? Rabbi Yehuda Omer Kosha Ena Yechola La Hamid Badam, a ship that does not, that is not affected, that won't be overbalanced if the person moves. Okay. Yashvu ala neser, they sat on a plank, ala safsal, ala gashish shalmita, or on, on a bed plank, or ala achlonas, um, on the beam, bizman she'en machkirin, if they, if they, if they don't wobble. Alu ilan she'kocha yafe, they, they climbed a, um, a strong tree together, v'socha she'kocha yafe, or on a, on a branch that does not move when a person sits on it. Usalam tori, on a, on a tyrian ladder. Which is a strong one, or mitri bismanshu kavu of a masmeri. Even an Egyptian ladder, if it's fixed by a nail, ala kevesh on a plank or on a beam on the on the door bismanshehen asuin batit when they are when they are fixed in place with plaster, afilo mitzad echad. Even if it's just one one side, they are nonetheless tahor because no transmission of of weight will happen between the two people. Hatar make esatame. What happens if a tahor person hits the tame person and uh, and he therefore falls over? Okay, that uh, is tahor. Hatame make is a tahor, but if a tame person hits the uh, hits the tahor, okay, um, that will that will become tame. Shimi mashecha tahor, hare hatame yo nafel. You see what's happening is is that the the as as the blow as the blow is struck, the tame person is judged that the that that he's that he's balanced so that uh, so that if he hits the if the if he hits the ta tahor person, um. Everything is great, and he'll keep his balance. But if a tower person does a jujitsu on him and moves out the way, then his yeah. fall. 
So what happens, so what you see over here is that the tower person is actually supporting the weight of the tame person by stopping the blow. Nice. Okay. Okay. I'd come. Cute. It's Hazara. Cute. Okay. <laughs> All right. Musk. Um, but hey, if someone bears, if someone beats on a hide, if it was outside the water, it is included in the law of the water is placed. And if it was inside the water, it is not included in the law of water is placed. But Yossi says, even if it was inside the water, it is included in the law of water is placed, since his intention is that it should emerge together with the dirt. The water that comes up on a boat in the boat in the bilge or on the oars is not included in the water law of water is placed. Um, the traps and various types of nets is not included in the law of water is placed, but if he shook them, it is included in the law of water is placed. If someone if someone uh, transports a boat to the great sea in order to strengthen it, if he takes a nail out of the um, out to the rain to strengthen it, or if he leaves a fur firebrand in the rain in order to extinguish it, this is included in the law of water is placed. The cover of tables and the mat of the bricks are not included in the law of water is placed, but if he shook them, they are included in the law of water is placed. Okay. Need a hay base. Um, if a Cohen was eating truma and he felt that his livers were trembling, he grabs the male organ and he swallows the truma. This, these discharges contaminate in any amount, even an amount equal to a mustard seed and even an amount less than that. An infant girl who is one day old can become tummy by discharging need the blood. A girl who is 10 days old can become tummy by discharging ziva blood. An infant boy who is one day old can become tummy by uh, emitting ziva fluid. Furthermore, he can become tummy by contracting uh, saras uh, uh, afflictions. He can become tummy from a corpse. He binds for yibum and he releases and he releases from yibum. He causes others to eat truma and he disqualifies others from eating truma. Mm. He inherits and bequeaths, and one who kills him is liable. And if he if he is to his father, his mother, and all his relatives like a full-fledged bridegroom. A girl who is three years old and one day old can become betrothed through co cohabitation. And if her Yavim cohabitates with her, he inquires her further. He inquires her. Furthermore, one is liable on account of her for committing adultery with a married woman. This causes one who cohabitates with her to become tummy to the degree that he will render a bottom the couch as tummy as that which is on top. If she is fully married to a Kohen, she may eat truma. If one is disqualified, if one of the disqualified men cohabitates with her, he disqualifies us from the kahuna. And if any one of the Arayos written uh, uh, partners mentioned in the Torah cohabitates with her, he is put to death because of her, but she is not liable for punishment. And cohabitation with a girl younger in age than this is like poking a finger in the eye. Okay. Okay. All right, Gimel the paradu was split open, and the Kohen would stand outside its pit and would take see the hood, Ezo, um, Ezov, and crimson wool. He would say to them, This is cedar wood, this is cedar wood, this is Ezov, this is Ezov, and this is crimson wool, this is crimson wool. Three times concerning each thing. And they said to him, Yes, and yes, three times concerning each thing. The Kohen would bind the, uh, the cedar wood with the azov with the remnants of a strip of crimson wool and cast the bundle into the burning of the paraduma. When the paraduma was burned, they would bear it would, would stick, beat it with sticks and sift it in sieves. And Bishmael says that it was done with hammers of stone and sieves of stone. Charcoal containing ash would grind, and what did, would not contain ash, they would have untouched. As for bone, in either case, it would be ground. And they would divide the ashes into three portions. One portion would be placed in the, in the tail, one would be placed in the amount of oil, and one would be divided among all the watches. If one slaughtered a khatas cow, not for its own sake, but it is invalid, or it received the blood or sprinkled it, not for its own sake, but for, it, uh, for its own sake and not for its own sake, or not for its own sake and for its own sake, it is invalid. If Eliezer, Eliezer accepts this, accepts, it, rules is acceptable. Or if it was performed by one whose hands and feet had not been washed, it is invalid. If Elias, Elias validates it. And if it was not performed by the Kohen Gardel, it is invalid. If Judah validates it. And if the service was performed by, uh, by a Kohen who lacks vestments, it's disqualified. And if, performed with, if it was performed with the white vestments, I'm sorry, and it was performed with the white vestments. Okay. Okay. And uh... tomorrow.
If, if these are the Kadoshim whose offspring and Tamara exchanges are similar to the original Kadoshims themselves, concerning the offspring of a Shalom, a Shalom and a Tamara of the Shalom, their offspring and the offspring of their offspring, and its Venaitim. These are all deemed Shalom. The, thus, they require leaning libation in the waving of the breast and thigh. And with Elias, it says the offspring of a Shalom may not be offered as a Shalom, but the sages say it may be offered. Rabbi Shimon says, Rev. Eliezer and the sages did not disagree concerning the offspring of the offspring of a shlom or concerning the offspring of an offspring of a truma, but that it may not be offered. Concerning what did they disagree? Concerning the offspring itself. Rev. Eliezer says it may not be or it may not be offered, whereas the sages say it may be offered. The Bishua and Rev. Papayas testified concerning the offspring of a shlom that it is offered as a shlom. Rev. Papayas said, I testify that we had a cow that was a shlom sacrifice and we ate on it, ate it on Pesach. And we ate its offspring as a shlomit on the festival. Concerning the offspring of the Toda and the Toda Tumora, the offspring of the Toda and the Tumora and the offspring of the offspring, these are all treated like the Toda itself, except that they do not require bread. The Truma of an Ola, the offspring of a Tumora of an Ola, that is the Tumora's offspring and the offspring of its offspring, ad infinitum, these are all treated like the Ola itself, thus they require skinning, dismemberment, and are consigned in their entirety to the fires. Yeah. One more. If one designates a female animal as an ola and she gave birth to a male, the offspring is left to graze until it develops a blemish and should then be sold and the owner should bring it as an ola with the proceeds. But Elazar says the offspring itself is offered as an ola. If one designates a female animal as an ola of asham, it should be sent to great graze until it becomes blemished. Then it should be sold and its owner should bring asham with its proceeds. And if the owner, Hashem, was already brought, the proceeds should fall to the temple chest for voluntary offerings. Now, Shimon says it should be sold even without a blemish. Concerning the Truma of an Hashem and the offspring of a Truma, a Tumora, the Tumora own offspring, the offspring of an offspring, and the Adfinitum, they should be sent to graze until they become blemished, and then they should be sold, and the proceeds should fall to the temple chest for voluntary offerings. But Rabbi Eliezer says they should be left to die. And Rabbi Elazar says the owner should bring all the offerings with their proceeds. And Ashim, whose owner died, and the one whose owner received atonement, should be sent to the graves until they become blemished, and then they should be sold. And their proceeds should fall to the temple chest for all voluntary offerings. But Rabbi Eliezer says they should be left to die. And Rabbi Elazar says the owner should bring an all, all the offerings with, with their proceeds. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to go at this point. So uh, I'll finish the remaining. Have uh, a good day. I will send you. Uh, I will send you the RSVP. This okay. Morning. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.